What's up guys? Today we're going to be checking out the XJimmy Horizon Pro 4K Smart Home Projector. So this is XJimmy's flagship projector for this year, which it does support 4K HDR. Let's get this thing unboxed and see what we get inside. I'd like to send a shout out to XJimmy for sending this over for us to review. I recently reviewed their, their smaller one, so I'm glad that they sent over their, their big boy. There's actually another model of this called the, the Standard Horizon, which doesn't support 4K, which is only 1080p. So this is their, their best one. So inside the box, after you lift off the top, you will be greeted with the projector itself. Underneath this are the accessories. We have some documentation. This is the power cord. And here's the giant power brick. And here is the remote control. It's actually a nice quality remote control. It's got a little bit of weight to it. As for the projector itself, this is a DLP projector with lamp life up to 25,000 hours. So that's something like eight hours a day for like nine or 10 years. So that's a long time. This could be one of the last projectors you buy for quite some time. Up front, we have the projector's lens, the sensor. On the top, we've got the power button, play button, volume up, volume down. There's also two eight watt speakers built in. Audio is handled by Harman Kardon. On the back, we have connections for audio out, LAN, two HDMI 2.0 ins with support for ARC, two USB inputs, one optical output, and then you have the power input. On the bottom, there is a threaded insert. So if you want, you could attach this to a tripod, which makes setting up a lot easier. The feet are not adjustable. So if you are going to put this on the table or something, you're gonna have to find some other means to prop it up and level it off. Now this is an official Android TV product, which runs on Android TV 10.0. Measurement wise, it measures 8.2 inches high by 8.6 inches wide by 5.4 inches deep. It's got a brightness rating of 2200 ANSI lumens. And if you are a video gamer, this is supposed to have about 35 milliseconds or so of latency for video games. Anyways, enough of the tech specs. Let's get this thing installed in the theater and see what kind of image quality this little guy can throw out. For setup, I'm gonna mount the projector on a tripod, placing it 10 feet away from a Stuart Film Screen Harmony G2, which has a gain of 0.07. This is in my dedicated theater, which is totally light controlled, so it's pitch black in here with the lights off. This will showcase how good this projector can look. All right, now let's quickly run through the setup. The autofocus didn't seem to work at the start, so this part is gonna be a little bit blurry. Tap the two buttons to pair the remote, which takes a second. After that, it's gonna ask you if you wanna do the setup with your phone, which I'm gonna skip. Next, you'll connect to your Wi-Fi, and then you'll be prompted to sign into your Google account. So you have to sign into your Google account to get this going. Once you get signed in, you're gonna to have to accept the terms of service. It's gonna ask if you wanna give it permission for your location. If you want to send some stats over to Google, and if you want to turn on Google Voice Assistant. I'm going to skip through most of this stuff here. Here are some additional apps that you can install if you'd like. I'm just going to speed this up and turn all this off. It's going to give you a quick little tutorial. And that is it. It's a little blurry right now, so we're going to have to focus this. And you can do that by tapping on the focus button. All right, once you get everything set up, you're gonna be taken to the home screen. If you've used Google TV before, then all of this is gonna look very familiar to you. But we are gonna go up into the settings and check out some of the projection options. First option here, you get your network settings, your accounts, your apps, projector settings, device preferences, and remotes and accessories. Under remotes and accessories, you can add an accessory like another remote control or a keyboard or a Bluetooth speaker. Under device preferences, we're just gonna go under about and see that we are under Android version 10.0. So we have Android 10. So as of this video, that is the current version. 
And of course you have all your other standard Google settings as well under the device preferences. But we're gonna jump into the projector settings. So under brightness, we got a few different options. We've got standard, we've got bright, eye protection, performance, which ramps up the fan so it keeps the unit as cool as possible. And under custom, you can change the brightness of your primary colors here, your red, green, and blue. You can also rename that if you want. We're gonna go back and put it back on the brightest setting here to give us the most brightness. You also get an option for environmental adaption. So if you want the projector to change brightness based on the luminance of your room, you can do that as well. Back out of that, we've got keystone correction. Now here, if you want, if you have some suboptimal placement in your room, like it's crooked or it's slightly off center, then you can click okay and the projector will attempt to straighten out the image on its own. And as you can see, it'll try to get the image as square as possible with your wall or your screen. But in my particular case here, it seems to have skewed the image to the right somehow. So it's not exactly perfect. I had it perfectly lined with the screen, so this is definitely a little bit off. So if you press the little hamburger menu here, you can go back and restore the image here. So it, now it's perfectly lined up. So maybe the software is a little wonky or something like that, but didn't exactly get it perfectly right with my screen. Now here's an extreme example of the auto keystone. If you can tell, the projector is turned almost sideways and the projector will try and give you the straightest picture. So I mean, that is kind of cool. So if you back out of that, you can manually adjust keystone yourself. So you can pick whatever corner you want. So upper left corner, you can bring it inwards, pull it down, bring it back out, or switch to a different corner. So you get a few different options there to align your screen as perfect as possible. So let's jump out of that. All right, let's jump into screen zoom. Now, if you've got a smaller screen and your projector is kind of further away and you want to project the image on a smaller section of your wall or a tiny screen, you can zoom all the way out digitally, mind you. So it looks like we can go all the way in, maybe about 50% or so. Now keep in mind, if you're using digital zoom, you should be able to see the gray borders on my screen here, which is using the full 4K resolution. If you're digital zooming all the way in, you're gonna cut that resolution down to about 1080p. So right now, this image you're seeing is that not actually 4K, it's about 1080p. If we zoom all the way back out, you're gonna use all the available pixels, which will give you the maximum resolution that this projector is capable of. So you do wanna keep this as zoomed out as much as possible so you are getting the full 4K resolution. The same applies to digital keystoning. So if you are keystoning, you are essentially chopping away at pixels trying to manipulate it digitally to fit your screen. So you wanna get your keystone and your digital zoom or your zoom to fit your screen as much as possible. So you will get the best image. Backing out of this, we have keystone settings. You've got keystone restore, which goes back to everything default, auto keystone on startup, auto keystone upon motion, auto obstacle avoidance, and auto screen alignment. I'm just gonna keep everything off because I've got everything perfectly set up as is. Next section, we've got focus settings. You can automatically have the projector autofocus on startup, or if it gets knocked or if it's detecting some motion, you can have it automatically focus again. Now, if you do want to autofocus the projector, all you have to do is tap on the focus button on the remote once, and it should focus automatically. If you want to manually focus it, hold down on the focus button until you see the arrows left and right. So just tap left or right to get this as sharp as possible. Under projector placement, we've got front, front ceiling, rear, rear ceiling, 
and auto flip. So you do have some options if you plan on mounting this on your ceiling. Under others, we have HDMI control settings. So if you want to turn on HDMI CEC, you can do that here. Gyro calibration, focus calibration, and keystone calibration. And that's it for all the projector settings. Now let's check out a few of the more popular apps. First one we're going to jump into is Amazon Prime Video. Let's check out to see if 4K HDR works. So here you can see that Jack Reacher does support UHD, 4K and HDR. And as far as I can tell, this does look very sharp and really quite good for Amazon Prime. Let's hop out of this. Let's check out Disney Plus. And Disney Plus looks to support 4K HDR as well, HDR 10 and 5.1. So no issues here, these apps work perfectly fine. So that's definitely 4K, that's definitely HDR. That is a razor sharp image for this movie. So let's jump out of this. Let's check out if 4K HDR works in Voodoo. Now in the Voodoo app, it looks like it does not support 4K or HDR, even though I have purchased The Lion King in 4K. You can only watch it in standard definition. Let's just check one more movie here. So Edge of Tomorrow definitely is in 4K with Dolby Atmos on the Apple TV and on the Roku. But again, it looks like you can only watch it in SD. So no 4K HDR support in the Voodoo app. Kind of a bummer. Now let's jump into the Apple TV app. So it does look like the Apple TV app does support 4K HDR and Dolby Atmos. It says Dolby Vision, but this projector does not support Dolby Vision. It only supports HDR10. Just like the Disney Plus app, this is a very sharp, very nice, crisp image. All right, let's jump out of that and jump into YouTube. Now that definitely looks like it's in 4K, but under quality settings, the YouTube app only supports 4K without HDR. Still a very sharp image though. All right, let's get out of that and check one more app, which is going to be Netflix. Let's check out Naomi Osaka, which is in 4K HDR with Dolby Atmos. Now when we press play, it'll say, sorry, your account can't be used on this device. So as of this video, the Xjimmy Horizon Pro is not Netflix certified. So if you do wanna watch Netflix, you will have to use an external device like an Apple TV or an Nvidia Shield or like a Roku. So the Netflix app doesn't work as of right now. All right, let's check out some of the image settings. So if you want to access some of the picture settings, just tap on the settings on the remote control and it'll bring up a little shortcut menu here. Let's jump into image mode. We've got a few different ones. We've got movie, which will bring you into some more advanced settings. Football. Office. Game. And custom. Under custom, you can change your brightness and your contrast, saturation, sharpness, noise reduction, and color temperature. You get warm, custom, standard, cold, and then back to warm. Under the advanced settings, you have a couple different options here for a local contrast. So if you want to bump up the contrast levels, you can go weak, medium, or strong. Under HDR you have auto or you can turn it off. Obviously if you turn it off then you're going to be stuck with a very washed out image so you want to keep that on auto. Then motion compensation you've got weak, medium, or strong. So if you do want to get that soap opera effect change the motion compensation here and it does work pretty well actually you also get some aspect ratio settings we've got auto 16 by 9 4 by 3 or original size image quality wise the projector is throwing out a very bright image it's razor sharp the only way you're going to notice any pixels is if you're walking straight up to the screen even then it's pretty pretty darn tough I'm gonna say, you know, resolution wise, if I was to compare it to my JVC, 
it's uh, it's very close. It has a more kind of digital artificial look to it since it is DLP over the Elcos projection that the JVC has and even the Sony has. So if you do want that, that super crisp, crisp image, I would say DLPs are the way to go. And you're definitely gonna get that, that razor sharp picture quality with this projector. As far as the black levels and the contrast, for a $1,800 projector, I'm actually pretty impressed with how everything looks. Obviously this is a DLP, so you don't get the deepest black levels like you would in say JVC or even a Sony, because they do skew a bit on the grayer side, if you couldn't tell by this still image of Batman. The grays, I mean the blacks are actually, you know, if you look in the background there, they are a bit grayish. Even when I turn on the contrast enhancement to strong, it definitely makes his white eyes pop a bit more, makes the specular highlights, those lights in the background, the water splashing on the ground, definitely pops a bit more, but it helps slightly with black levels, but there's still definitely a level of grayness there, so they are a bit raised. Overall though, I, I do think it adds a fair bit of good depth to the image. It's just not perfectly black as say something like the JVC or even the Sony. But then again, no, the JVC that I have is like 9,000 bucks and the other Sony that I have on hand is also $5,000. So not really an apples to apples to comparison, but for this price category, for this price range, the black levels here are very, very good actually. Since the projector is very bright, you can use this with an ambient light rejecting screen with a fair amount of lights turned on. Darker movies will be harder to see, but anything with bright colors should stand out pretty well. But if you do want to get the best performance, keeping the lights down low or totally off is the best way to go. When I came, I'll have to give you orders. Tell you what to do. How weird is that? You've no idea. So your dad showed you the whole kingdom. Did he show you the shadows beyond the north? He said I can't go there. Ever. And he's absolutely right. An elephant graveyard. Fan noise is very quiet and shouldn't be audible from a few feet away. Oh my god, this guy just turned off game mode. I don't care if you're a gamer or not, you will immediately understand and notice the difference. This is terrible. I think this is the worst outside of game mode that I've ever tested for a projector. This is terrible. But when you put it on, it's a night and day difference. It's like these dudes really understood over at XJimmy. They really understood, okay, yeah, game mode's got to be game mode. It's got to be legit. Woo! Set up for the win. Minimal input lag. That's what happens when you play well. You get people that quit on you. These other guys just quit. And they were ahead by one point. They didn't want the smoke of somebody like myself, a season three tournament winner, playing that well on a display like this with minimal input lag. It feels great, I gotta say. Does it feel like something that is holding me back in my gameplay? Feels good, sounds good, surprisingly as well. I wouldn't have any qualms recommending this sort of projector, this actual projector right here, the X-Jimmy to somebody who just wants to have a large screen play some video games and watch some movies because the sound is great. The setup is simple. There is game mode on it. I feel like all my movements are accounted for. It's not super delayed or anything like that. It's, it feels like a one and done solution because the audio coming out of this is great. You could throw it up on a screen like this, whether it be in a bright room or a dark room, you're going to be able to get good brightness, good color, good contrast. I mean, We've got this right now on an anti-light reflecting screen and it still looks good, it still looks colorful. It still is bright. This might be one of the better projectors we've tested here in terms of input lag, it just feels right. At the time of this video, the Horizon Pro is selling for $16.99. I gotta say, I think this might be the best small form factor projector I've tried out yet, with only a couple negatives. The Android TV operating system was snappy so bouncing in and out of apps was a breeze. Not every app supported 4K and HDR, and of course Netflix didn't work either. At least it didn't while shooting this video. So if you do need to get your Netflix fix, you will have to use an external streaming device. Sound quality wise, I think it's loud enough for a small room, but in a bigger space it's gonna struggle unless you pair it with some external speakers. 
Given the size of the projector, it shouldn't be that much of a surprise. The real star of the show is going to be the image quality. This is one sharp, crispy looking projector. 4K HDR content was bright and vibrant with some great colors. However, I do think the projector falls short for color saturation in comparison to my own JVC and Sony. The color gradations and tones don't seem to have the same wide spectrum of color while watching some HDR material, meaning the image isn't quite as rich. I know it's not a fair comparison, but I think it's worth mentioning as those are my reference points. Although the X-Jimmy does hold its own. Another thing worth mentioning is the rainbow effect. If you don't know what it is, then I wouldn't go looking it up. But if you do know what it is and you're sensitive to it, you may find yourself seeing it from time to time. For me personally, it wasn't a big deal unless I went looking for it. One other thing I would like to see in a future iteration is an optical zoom instead of a digital one. Using the digital zoom is going to degrade your image, and this being 4K, you're going to want to keep that 4K resolution whether you're zoomed all the way in or all the way out. That being said, I think if you're not a discerning videophile who wants the very best image possible, then the Horizon Pro is going to be more than enough to satisfy your ultra high definition needs. It's a very bright projector which can be used with some lights on and setup is super easy with plenty of options to make it fit your space. There's Chromecast support and Google Voice Assistant is built in if you want to ask it any questions. It's also really small and portable so you can take it out when you want to use it and just put it away when you're done. All in all, I found this to be an easy to use projector that can throw out an impressive picture all in a very small package. It can hold its own against projectors costing thousands more and it does so without breaking the bank. Well, those are my thoughts on the X-Jimmy Horizon Pro Smart Projector. If you're looking to get a new projector, the X-Jimmy should definitely be one to check out. Now, if you are interested in grabbing one of these, I'll leave some links for it down below in the video's description. As always guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to like this video if you found it useful, and we'll see you guys again in the next video.